Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. December 14th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Wherever you turn, there's injustice in the world, right? Isn't that what it's all about? Isn't the business I'm in one of pointing out injustice and expressing rage or outrage well, the worst in the business express false rage or false outrage at the most trivial things. And sometimes there are real things to become outraged by, you know. And one of them is this uh, execution of this innocent man by this cop who tells him he will be shot if he makes one wrong move as he's crawling on the ground. Now, I don't want to just dwell on it anymore. You can watch the tape on my website, michaelsavage.com. You can email the Justice Department and demand a federal investigation and a retrial of this cop for first-degree murder. We're also talking about Disney buying 21st Century Fox Entertainment assets. Many of you have called my screener and said, but Michael, the um, purchase does not include Fox Broadcasting, Fox News. I know that. But I also know that Fox News will be looking over its shoulder at Big Brother called Disney. They'll be making sure that Disney is happy with them at every turn and I can guarantee you that Fox News will change in a year or two as this new company uh, emerges and it will be middle of the road vanilla or else uh, they, the hosts will be thrown off the air because they're looking over their shoulder that's what I estimate is, is going to happen the landscape of the American media is changing right in front of our eyes you know along with the net neutrality change today which is very interesting and very complicated in many ways so we also talked about things as trivial as um, the subway sandwich problem, meaning how would you change uh, the subway sandwich? What, if you were the advisor to the subway sandwich chain, how would you improve the sandwiches to save the business? And we, I know it sounds trivial, but you know, it's part of American life. Hamburgers, sandwiches. Every once in a while, I get a McDonald's. I get fed up with good food. Yesterday, I had a McDonald's lunch. I felt great for hours. I was flying high on it. I mean, I know what's in it, more or less. I had that 16-ounce diet soda. I loved it. Slurped on it. I had fries, no salt. I had one chicken sandwich, uh, no no sauce. I even ate the bun. I made a mistake, even though I'm on a gluten-free diet for a week now. Uh, then I had the fish sandwich, no bread. Delicious. But weirdly enough, Teddy's not eating. I got worried he was dying yesterday. I got f really freaked out. He wouldn't eat anything. I know when he gets in that state of mind, my little dog, I buy him a hamburger and he usually eats it. He wouldn't even eat that, so I don't know what was wrong with him. Anyway, I, uh, he's okay today, you know, dogs are really weird. You don't know what, you know, they're very, very finicky dogs. Some of the dogs, the, the high-strung dogs are very hard to predict. He sulks like a person. If you look at him the wrong way, sometimes he doesn't look at you for, the whole day he'll look the other way, he'll sleep with his behind towards you. Poodles are, he's 100% poodle. He looks to it. Where's the one I was looking for with the stuffing of the dogs? I lost it already. Yeah, I found an article that I think I put up on the website of the stuffing of the dog. Did Karen get it up? Traditional depictions of mothers to be banned in advertisements from next year amid ongoing war on gender stereotypes. Oh, so they can't show a mother in a kitchen anymore. Okay, but where's the stuffing? Of the, here it is. Video, freeze-dry your dead pet, and the creepy memory will live on forever. I don't know. I would never freeze-dry Teddy. I, I think it's the sickest thing I've ever heard. There's a company in Pennsylvania that provides taxidermy services through freeze-drying. They put the, the poor little dead pet into a, I don't know, it takes moisture from the deceased pet and even wildlife, and then it stages them to look remarkably lifelike. And you can pose your pet in any fashion from sitting up, lying down, or appearing to sleep. And fees range from $400 to over $1,600 per animal. I don't think I could handle that. 
because I, I, I like talk to my dog. I would probably talk to the to the freeze dry Teddy. I wrote a book about Teddy called Teddy and uh, Teddy and Me. The subtitle is Confessions of a Service Human. I heard it went out in paperback. I didn't even know about that. That that's my memorial to Teddy. I mean, when he goes on to his whatever we go on to or animals go on to, I don't intend to freeze dry him. I got a site picked out for him up on the hill. I know it's, it's ghoulish. Well, what am I supposed to do? To, I'm not going to let them burn them and give me back ashes in a box. I have the first one in a little box. I, I knew a guy had a little, many boxes on his mantle of all his pets. I thought it was, I don't know, weird. Then once I went to look at a house, not too long. It was quite a lot, 10 years ago, somewhere here in the area where I live. It was like a couple acres. And it was a house that had been a former hunting lodge. And in the back of it, there was a pet cemetery. It was quite interesting, you know, like I'm going to make a name, Alice, 1908 to 1911. She jumped like no other, you know, like one of those. It was amazing to be in that pet cemetery. So I got the idea to create a pet cemetery. I don't know. I know I'm just talking here. I, I Politics are dead. I'm not talking about Roy Moore. I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm not talking about I, Sulzberger. I'm not talking about Murdoch or... I'm trying to have a tea-free day. Is it is it considered Ill, disloyal not to say the word Trump once in three hours? I wonder if there's if that's a new loyalty oath. If you have to say it at least once in three hours and show outrage that the government is going after him and his family, you have to get you have to show a certain degree of outrage to be invited for a, a visit. It's not my job. My job is to be a talk show host. What I've been long before Trump came along, I was a talk show host. And I hope to be here as long as he's in the White House and then some. I hope eight more years. Fine. is wonderful. But I'm not going to spend my whole life talking about Donald Trump, if you don't mind. What do you want to talk about? <clears throat> What's this one? Congressional ethics chief accused of assaulting women. It's getting crazy by the day. I saw this yesterday in San Francisco. The head of the, I don't know, another ethics woman was fired at the UC Med Center. The UC Medi the California Medical Center, she, she didn't do her job or she covered up the number of us. Everyone's claiming assault now at the University of California. She couldn't keep up with the complaints. So they fired her for fudging data. How could they keep up with everyone? Oh, he looked at me, he talked to me, bought me chocolates. Oh, yeah, he sent me chocolates. That means he wanted to rape me. In fact, it, he means he did rape me. He raped me through chocolate. It was a chocolate rape. That's how crazy the country is becoming. Congressional ethics chief accused of assaulting women. Who's this one now? Let's see the chief. I'm, I'm clicking on Drudge. Congressional. I, I doesn't. It's not downloading. Oh, head of congressional ethics office sued for abusing position. Accused of assaulting women. Oh God! Now I have to close this button to proceed. I hate pop-ups. I hit the button. Move on already. Take a short survey. No, no, thank you. Head of congressional ethics office sued for abusing position. Accused of assaulting women. Who is this one? He's got a beard. Omar Ashmawai. Omar Ashmawai, staff director of the Office of Congressional Ethics. Overseas investigation is the misconduct of lawyer. Accused in a federal lawsuit of verbally abusing and physically assaulting women and using his federal position to influence local law enforcement, according to a complaint filed in a federal court in Pennsylvania last month. You have read one of five free articles on foreign policy. Join now. For, oh, come on. I can't join. I just want to read it. I'm on the air. Just give me a pass here. Blah, blah, blah. The evening appeared to start off well for Ashmaway. A $400 dinner with his girlfriend at an upscale restaurant in Milford, followed by late night drinks at a local bar. It ended, however, with him bruised and bloody in the back of a police car. Two months later, three men were arrested for assaulting Ashmaway. What? I don't understand this. If he was assaulted, why is he being... I don't get this. I can't follow these cases. I don't understand them anymore. I really don't understand these cases anymore. They're too convoluted. Head of Congressional Office of Ethics sued for abusing position accused of assaulting women. Give me a break already. How can you keep up with this? What else is in the news? Uh, the secret history of the Russian consulate in San Francisco, not interested. You know, these topics don't interest me. This is all like politics. I'm not in Omarosa allowed her back in White House day after firing. What a piece of work she looks like. First, they said they took her out kicking and screaming. Then she said she wasn't taken out kicking and screaming. 
Then she said she's going to write a tell-all book, and now they let her back in. <clears throat> Apparently, her threat of kicking and screaming and writing a tell-all book got her back in to see Donald Trump. Spotted Pig Chef apologizes over sexual harassment claims against business partner. Again? This is a woman now? What do you mean pig? What's a pig chef? What is a pig chef? April Bloomfield is eating somehow. The Spotted Pig Chef... Apology following a bong that our business partner, Ken Friedman, a serial... Oh, please. I'm not interested in this anymore. What else? Everyone's an assaulter, a rapist. What else is in the news? Not, it's what I'm saying. We're, we've melted down already. There's nothing left. There's nothing to get outraged over anymore. The, the election in Alabama is over already. We, we covered it. <clears throat> Recommended few. There's nothing left but to read your horoscopes. Let me go read my horoscope on the air. Or, or do you want me to do nutrition? Or do you want me to keep, keep up with the horror of the world? Horror, on the, horror of the world. Horror of the world. Or how to improve Subway sandwiches. I'm trying to get my horoscope up. Wait, I'm going to go down. I Just for the heck of it, indulge me. I just indulge me. Astrology, Sagittarius. I'm an Aries. Let's see what it says. It's going to happen to me. Me and 10 million other people. Aries, if you're not happy with your current situation, then do something about it. Don't go along with other people's plans just to stay in the good books. It will simply lead to a bigger crisis and falling out later. Make changes and make them now. Okay, that's very specific. You know, sometimes these weird things have been surprisingly clever and brilliant in their analysis. So they've worked for me. How can it work for you? Seven billion people on the planet, divide them up, the zodiac signs, and what is it? How many uh, hundreds of millions per sign? How can, it, how can it apply to everyone under that sign? It's impossible. But it's interesting writing. It's sort of like a fortune cookie. I mean, do you really believe a fortune cookie? You know, you eat a meal, you, you have a drink, and then you look at the fortune cookie. You know, you run your life according to that. You may as well become mayor of San Francisco or a supervisor. I mean, that's a perfect job for you. Or if that doesn't work, you, you can always write for the San Francisco Chronicle. As long as it's approved by Willie Brown, I'm sure it'll be published. Let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation. What's this? Okay, sandwiches. We'll talk about sandwiches. What would happen to that cop if he was uh, found guilty and put into prison? If that cop was retried by the federal government and found guilty and put into a federal penitentiary for first-degree murder, everyone would know what he's in for. He'd be in protective custody, no doubt, with the other, you know, I guess... Those in protective custody. Yeah, you're not going to put him in general. You're not going to put him in general. general. But this cop was crazy. You look at him, you, you look at the hands, you listen to the commands, and you know this man was out to kill. He even said, if you make one wrong move, I'm going to shoot you. I've never heard anything like it. The lawyer now, the lawyer is a piece of work. What kind of jury did they shop this to? Where'd they find them? In a me mental hospital? What would you rather talk about, the uh, cop killing the poor unarmed man as he cried for his life or a Subway sandwich? Or uh, let's go to Judy on KLIF in Dallas, Texas. Judy, what, what do you want to talk about? Michael, thank God you're bringing up this shooting. There is outrage. I mean, all of my friends, my family, when you listen to that, you just get so upset. So I wish you would play it over and over again. No, I can't do it. It gets me too sick. Whenever I hear that cop's command voice, I want to shoot him. All I could think of is this cop was out to kill. He was a rogue cop, in my opinion, uh, a psychopathic murderer, clearly out to kill, finding an excuse to kill somebody. And I think anyone listening to that man's voice hears that in his voice. That's my interpretation of it. You're so right, but you have to hear, you have to force yourself to listen to it. I know, I know, but they can listen to it on my website. You know, they don't. I don't want to play it again on a national radio show. So instead, what I'm going to do is give you a copy of uh, God, Faith, and Reason. I think I'm going to move to something like maybe I'll read a page or two for my wonderful book. What is today? The 14th of December. Many of you haven't even shopped yet for Christmas. Here's a nice little quote from Isaiah. Tell me if it's still current or not. You know, many of you say, ah, oh, the Bible's interesting ancient poetry from the Israelites, but it has no meaning. Here's one from Isaiah that is on page 145. Are you ready? Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. Isaiah 1-7. Thank you, Isaiah. You would have made a good talk show host. I'll be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. I declare politics dead for 2017. I'd rather talk about anything but. But I do want to talk about this Amorosa. I never heard of her, but apparently Donald Trump thought so highly of her because she worked on his television show that he made her a major presidential aide, which doesn't speak very well, by the way, for the functioning of the office. So apparently Amorosa got into a fight with General Kelly. He threw her out of the uh, White House. They claim that she was taken out kicking and screaming. Now, she said, I can't wait until I tell my story. All of a sudden, they were letting her back in the White House. They gave her the, the clearance again. Shows you what threats do. They work. So we just heard that she's allowed back in. Sarah Huckabee Sanders just said, we put out a statement. The president likes Amarosa and thanked her for her service. She will be here later this afternoon. <laughs> what a precedent that is. If you get it, listen. So if you get thrown out of your job, kicking and screaming, and they have to call security, just threaten to write a tell-all book. You'll be invite, right, invited right back by the CEO. She resigned after seeing things that made her made her very uncomfortable. Okay, well, I can only imagine what that is. Uh, here we are again, so we'll know nothing about that. And let's see what else is not in the news that I can talk about because it's not political. Russell Simmons declares hashtag not me. Wife wants seat of lawmaker who killed self over sex assault claim. Is Richard Gere engaged? No, all the gerbils are taken. No, he can't be engaged. I heard all the gerbils are taken this time of year. They're in burrows. How could he be engaged? <laughs> I got Robert to laugh on that one. It came out of no. I just saw, is Richard Gere engaged? I said, no, all the gerbils are taken at this time of year. They're in hibernation, and the few that are around are all you know accounted for. So I don't believe that story is true. Uh, net neutrality, not interested. Paul Ryan, not interested. Putin, not interested. Marco Rubio, he's back. Threatens to hold out on one point five trillion dollar tax bill. What's he? What's he lobbying for? Him? For what is Marco Rubio now? All of a sudden, making himself relevant. What's he? What's he want out of the deal? I have to look into that one. Little Marco, when he drank water, remember they made an issue of it. It was pretty smart to drink water. It keeps you from saying United States. All right, so there's a company that freeze dries your dead pet, and then you could have it posed in any manner that you wish, sleeping on the floor, sitting up and smiling at you with its tongue out, begging for a piece of chicken. Uh, let's play this little one-minute tape, and then I'm going to ask you a question about freeze drying your, your, your um, mate or your pet. This is Monster, the Chihuahua. He's from Virginia. He's been out of the dryer not too long. My name's Chuck Rupert, and I freeze dry the dryer. Pets. Second Life Freeze Dry is a business that preserves your pet like you remember it. The process is to extract all the moisture, and that's what preserves the animal. This is the freeze dryer. With this process, they can be posed in any fashion you want. Sitting up, laying down, sleeping, whatever the case might be. It's nothing magic, it's cold temperature and vacuum. There's some emotional help that people get out of having their pet still physically around. It provides them comfort. What they tell me is, I lost my companion, and in some form, they got him back. People are amazed that their pet looks exactly like it did when it was the last time that they saw them. I enjoy the challenge of making them as lifelike as possible. I like my job. Well, there you have it, freeze-drying your pet. Okay, well, how far are we, uh, are we away from freeze-drying humans? That's the next question. And I can ask a comedic question, but it's a little too, you know, sardonic even for me. Would you freeze-dry your, your husband, a, f a father, a mother? You want to freeze-dry people now and have them... They've actually done this in the past. I, I've seen stories on it. In, like in England, they did it in the 1890s. They found someone with like a stuffed wife in a chair. I don't know how it mattered. There was no freeze drying in those days. I don't know what they did. But what would be the object of freeze drying a pet? I don't understand it. An animal dies. 
living creature, the way of all flesh, through millennia. I, I don't go for the uh, frying it up and getting the, the ashes back for people or pets. I don't even know what it's called. It's so against my nature and religion to burn somebody and get the ashes back. I know a guy in England, his parents, that father was bigger than life. I knew the father before I knew the son. Well, I knew the son before the father. The father was a big man, very powerful. Then he died. And then the son got the ashes back, and he put him in, a, you know, something, and he keeps him in the back of a closet somewhere in his house. It's almost because he hated his father. It's like his way of, like, insulting them. He didn't even put them, like, in a, you know, a prominent place on his mantle. He stuffed them in a closet in an urn. It's awful. Yeah, I don't know. So the whole thing's creepy. There's something just so creepy about the world as it's emerging. There's no changing the direction we're going in with AI, with robots, freeze-drying pets, the world we're entering is, is, is truly a brave new world, and uh, no one can really predict. You can only, a science fiction writer can, can uh, estimate what this world's going to look like in 5, 10, 15 years. Estimate. Can't predict. But I myself, uh, Teddy, when I wrote, uh, to me, writing a book about an animal or a person is a, is a, a memorial, not freeze-drying them. So I'd rather talk about a Subway sandwich. Maybe they should freeze-dry the uh, Subway sandwiches and give you a picture of a sandwich that is edible. What if they freeze-dry an actual sandwich that's a foot long, that's tasty and has good food in it, and you don't, you don't have to eat it? You get that, and you go out and buy another sandwich. That might <laughs> Okay, Al did this to his pets. Al, are you kidding me? Line eight. Al, you actually freeze-dried your pets? Yes, I did. They uh, passed away back in the 90s, and this was a new technology. And at that time, you know, I was in the scientific field, and they uh, were talking about being able to clone pets. And I thought, well, you know what? On the off chance I could do that eventually, I had it done. Well, where are these freeze-dried pets now? They're in a uh, container in my closet, waiting for the technology for cloning to get better. Of course, they probably won't. But, I mean, do you ever bring out? Do you bring it out and, and talk to the freeze-dried pet? No, no, no. I know they're there. I know what they look like. It's sort well, of. I know. So, wait, wait, how can you wait? Well, let's stop for a minute. If you freeze-dry an animal that dies, you remove all of its moisture. You can never rehydrate that pet. That pet can never come back to life. I was thinking that, and when it started, but it was the only ch uh, was the only chance I had. I know freezing them. Physically, like in a freezer, would break the cells open, wouldn't have anything. Well, no, there's chirogenics where you can put a human being who dies into a, into an icy chamber yeah. that is low moisture, and then, and then you're hoping that the disease they died from is cured one day, and then you unfreeze them and cure the disease. I've, I've seen those. I've known about chirogenics since I was a doctoral student back in the 70s at the University of California. There's a chirogenics facility right across the bay here. I think it's still there with a lot of frozen stiffs in there. I would, but that wasn't available uh, for for pets at that time. This was the only thing I could find, and I'm just on the off chance. No, I mean, you didn't do it to have the pets sit around like on a sofa with you or anything. No, 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 no. I wouldn't put them that's, on that's, or anything that, like that. That's too far for you. Weird. That's going too far. That's weird. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not into the freeze drying. And it's hard to follow the the changing world is so challenging to traditionalists such as myself that. What it does for you, as, as um, flexible as I can be mentally, and I can be quite flexible, there are certain things that are, that are immutable to me, and one of them is not tampering with death. I'll put it to you that way. So, you know, different strokes for different folks. And so, so what value does a Bible have, or what ba value does believing in God have to you then? You, personally, Al, do you still have any faith at all? Oh, yeah, no, I do. I do. It's just in what? The pets were so special to me that if... I'm not challenging that. But I'm saying, do you still have a faith in God, an all-powerful God? Yes. All right. I mean, I'm not here to make it mockery or challenge you. Let me send you my book on it, which is God, Faith, and Reason. It's the, it's the dark horse of the uh, bookstore right now, buried in the back. Buried. They, you know, the people in the bookstore business are not very uh, God-oriented. You know that. If it was about, you know, Jenny has two mommies or... Bobby had a young boyfriend, then it would be in the front of the store, glorified as great literature. But they took my book, which should be under bestsellers, and they put it in the back under Christian and Inspirational, which is actually wonderful, but then only people who are looking for Christian books are going to find it. 
If you're looking for a generalized book for for the holidays, which this book fills that order, you're going to have to search the stores for it. It's really uh, bothering me a lot. Maybe I should read something. What is this, Lotus from the Muck? Eh, I don't know if you want to hear this. Should I read about Lotus from the Muck? God, God and Country. No. No, I think that's too political. Is there anything in the book that you want to read on the air? I never did that yet. Okay, I'll read something on the faith and freedom. I had a caller on the Savage Nation who compared me to an Old Testament prophet warning people about the dangers of liberalism. It was just after I had done a show segment on the wonderful movie Hacksaw Ridge. The hero Desmond Doss drew courage from the Bible and eventually earned the Congressional Medal of Honor without firing a shot. But the caller's point was that everything I had done up to my book Scorched Earth was like an Old Testament prophet while with Trump's war... I played the role of John the Baptist, who said, he must become greater while I decrease. He was referring to the many times I had Donald Trump on my show, introducing the man who would bring my message of borders, language, and culture to an even wider audience than I already had. It was a very interesting insight. As I said at the beginning of this book, God does not do the heavy lifting for us. It is up to us to find our connection to God and to do his will here. I truly believe that my lifelong fight for our borders, language, and culture is a part of my mission. As I've said many times, it's indisputable that I helped Trump get elected. It's equally indisputable that as imperfect as he is, he represented the only chance to restore a free, just, and godly nation given the crossroads we were at last November. But then I ask on page 148, but what is my role now that Trump has been elected? That same caller suggested that winning the election was akin to the ancient Israelites being freed from bondage in Egypt. That's not a bad analogy. But let's not forget that even the Israelites didn't go directly from Egypt to the Promised Land. Not only did they have to wander for 40 years in the desert before reaching Canaan, they had to conquer the Promised Land before taking possession of it. That 40 years of wandering wasn't just bad luck. In Exodus, God makes the Israelites wander in the desert because of their infidelity to him and their decisions to do evil in his sight. What a great metaphor for where we are today. Yes, we won a crucial election that may have saved our country from irreparable ruin. But Trump hasn't been perfect. He's already taken many wrong turns, as when he allowed the neocons to manipulate him into bombing Syria based on hearsay evidence of Assad gassing his own people. But like Moses, who also dis disobeyed God's will, while leading the Israelites to Canaan, he is still leading America toward its own promised land. He's made mistakes along the way and will likely make many more in the future. But at least he's taking us in the right direction. And let's not forget that we've had great victories along the way as well, just as the Israelites did at Ai and Jericho. Trump has succeeded in stemming the tide of unvetted refugees from nations with high numbers of Islamic terrorists. He had to take that one all the way to the Supreme Court. And he's been able to get rid of the most onerous regulations Obama put on businesses, particularly in the fossil fuel industries. I remain cautiously optimistic that he won't let the sellouts in his party go too far in repealing environmental regulations under the pretense of reversing Obama's, which are far too restrictive. And I could go on, if you want, about elections and politics, but we're creeping back into politics. I wanted to creep back into God rather than to politics. So I'll conclude the um, entry on page 152 of the book. Many of you have it. Many of you plan on buying it for Christmas. And here's how I conclude that, sh that, that chapter. What did I expect for having back Trump? I didn't expect anything. I didn't want a job, nor do I want one now. I can't work in a bureaucracy. I'm not moving anywhere. This is what I'm meant to do, which is to broadcast and write books. So the umbrella I bought to take to the inauguration will be auctioned off on eBay one day. It did not go to the inauguration, and I don't expect it to go to future State of the Union addresses either. I will auction it off and give the money to a charity for veterans. It'll probably bring in a lot of money. There is one thing I would like to get out of all this. Maybe one day Donald Trump will try to persuade the British government to take my name off the UK ban list. You know I'm still legally banned from visiting England, basically for telling the truth. That's one thing I hope to get out of all this work. I'm, I'm, I, work I'm doing trying to restore some semblance of Western civilization. But it's not what most, what's a more, most important to me. Moses never made it into the promised land, but he knew his people were going to make it. I can certainly forego making it into the United Kingdom if I can leave knowing my people are going to achieve their promised land 
after I move on. That's very touching. I, I'm very touched by it. Wow, I, I, I really touched myself with that passage. It's good writing. If you can read it yourself and detach yourself and get moved by your own writing, it's pretty good. But come January, I'm going to... Fer what did I just say? Come, come January, I'm going to circulate the petition to uh, remove my name from the list of people banned from entering the United Kingdom, and I'm going to present it by petition to the President of the United States, and we will see if he helps us, and me in particular. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. With the news out there, you know, what you can hope for is a good night's sleep. And the truth is, and I've told you this before, I sleep well on my Casper mattress. And I do pick it over every mattress I ever had. It'll help you get the best night's sleep that you ever had. And switching is a no-brainer. It's very, very affordable. You'll sleep cool and comfortable. You'll sleep better than on your old overpriced mattress. And Casper ships right to your door for free in a small, small box you don't like it, they'll pick it up and refund you everything. From its breakthrough design and superior quality to its packaging to letting you try it for 100 nights, it is no wonder Casper was named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative brands of 2017. And sleeping on a mattress, you know, is the best way to try it. So put Casper to the test in your own home, even if you're a politician. 100 nights, risk-free. Go to Casper.com, code SAVAGE, and you will get $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. You heard me right. That's Casper.com, code SAVAGE, and you'll get $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. Casper.com, terms and conditions apply. Well, I think the way I'm going to end this hour is to read about prison food. Iowa State Penitentiary, Iowa, serves goulash for lunch. Yeah, I'm looking at the picture of the goulash. It looks like something that came out of a latrine. James T. Vaughan Correctional Center, Delaware, serves neutral loaf. Uh, to inmates who misbehave. Neutral loaf is made of meat, vegetables, and bread mashed together and baked into a loaf. <laughs> oh, God. Looks like... <laughs> okay. Maricopa County, 10 City Jail. You know who that is. He served in peanut butter and jelly. Okay. Well, what if you're a vegan? They give you that? Adelanto Detention Facility, California. Uh, lunchtime looks like this. Ugh. A piece of white bread and an orange. Lon Evans Correctional Center, Texas, meat, vegetable, and dessert. Kitchen serves up approximately 10,250 hot meals a day to its inmates. You got your meatloaf, you got your vegetable, you got your bad potato. Oh, God, I would die. What are you supposed to serve a prisoner? What, a gourmet meal? You know, you, you screw up, you wind up in jail. You're lucky you're eating it all. Eastern State Penitentiary, Philadelphia, salt beef and Indian mush. Eastern State Penitentiary, and that's what they ate for dinner in the 1800s. Oh, I am sure they tricked me. Okay. What do they serve now? The State Correctional Institution at Cole Township, Pennsylvania. Well, they try to provide them with a balanced diet, but, you know, what are you going to get out of this? You know, prisoners today, they ride over everything. There's a rabbi who's suing. I saw the lawsuit yesterday. I really got angry. There's a rabbi assigned to Corcoran State Prison. And he cooked up a lawsuit. It really is nauseating over kosher food. And he didn't get kosher food. He got not enough kosher food. Then he got too much kosher. It's, it's nuts. The whole thing is catering to every crank in the country, every kind of meal. I don't know how this country can survive. But it's the lawyers who are doing it. You know, first it wasn't the, the medical care wasn't good enough. Then the food isn't good enough. Everything's crazy now, all judged in courts, not in the court of common sense. And remember, we can't afford gourmet meals in prisons. And when you got veterans dying in VA hospitals, they should come before prisoners, not after. It's simple. Guantanamo Bay Naval Base. Can you imagine what they served them there with the halal meals? What they had to do down there to, to, to cater to them? Unbelievable in Guantanamo. A guy wanted to blow up your child's nursery school. 
855-407-282. I'll be back. Be here or be nowhere. It's the Savage Nation. Visit me at michaelsavage.com. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. December 14th, 2017. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I declare politics dead for 2017. On the 14th of December, 2017, I declare politics dead for 2017. I would rather talk about how you would improve the Subway sandwich chain sandwich than talk about Paul Ryan or Roy Moore. I would rather talk about freeze-drying your pet than talk about Donald Trump. So I don't want to do politics. However, I, it may seep in because it's primarily, you know, it's primarily a political world we live in. And you've gotten used to thinking talk radio is about politics when it really isn't. It's just that it's been pulled in that direction over the last number of years, as the ratings continue to plummet uh, across the board in talk radio, people keep going in the same direction uh, of politics. But it's not really about politics. There's more in the world than politics. Do you understand that? Politics is not the sun, the moon, and the stars. It's one part of the universe. Now, look, I was ready to read my monologue on Alabama Vote Confirms Christian Values, but you could read it on michaelsavage.com. Why should I read to you what you can read for yourself and yes the wife of the man killed by the Arizona cop as he was on his knees begging for his life spoke and I will cover that story again today I did it last week and I called for a federal investigation of that Arizona cop and I still insist you should lobby Jeff Sessions to take over the Mesa Arizona Police Department and to retry the cop who executed that man as sure as I'm sitting here that man was executed as he begged for his life, and the cop is a psychopathic murderer, in my opinion. Let's see, what else do I have for you that I can get out of the way? Cannabin, something about marijuana, cannabidic, is not likely to be abused, says WHO. Now, uh, this is interesting. I don't trust the United Nations, I don't trust WHO, but the World Health Organization endorsed a gentle view of cannabidiol. It's one of the alkaloids in cannabis, marijuana. So I believe that there are helpful components found in marijuana plants. However, I think all of them can be abused and create dependence. I also have a list of people by percentage willing to fight for their country, listed by nation. And we're way down on the bottom of the list. Willing to fight for their country, listed by nation. Morocco, 94% of the people in Morocco would fight for their country. Pakistan, 89%. Vietnam, 89%. India, 75% would. Turkey, 73% of the people would fight for their country. China, 71. Indonesia, 70. Israel, 66. Russia, 59. 50% uh, of Nigerians would fight for their country. 48% of Brazilians. In the U.S., only 44% of people polled, according to Gallup, would fight for their country. And the lowest is Japan at 11%. Would you believe that? I guess... Disneyland did their job on them. So many decades of Disneyland that Japan has destroyed a once ferocious nation of warriors. How they've gone from Bushido to Annette Funicello, I'll never understand. But only 11% of Japanese would be willing. <laughs> Does anyone even know who Annette Funicello is? I thought about that. I mean, some of my references are so esoteric. That Annette Funicello was the face of Mickey Mouse, of, of the Mickey Mouse uh, for many years. And speaking of Mickey Mouse... Mickey Mouse just bought Fox for $50 billion. Now, this is a very bad thing for the world. I know everybody's afraid to say it for fear that Mike Iger, whatever his first name is, is going to own the whole media world uh, uh, through the Magic Kingdom. But this kind of conglomeration of monopoly is a disaster for freedom of speech. 
irrespective of the fact that Iger is a left-wing fanatic and that Disney is a left-wing, twisted anti-family organization now, very bad for your children, Disney now just bought Fox for $50 billion. They are reshaping the entire landscape of entertainment. And uh, we'll see where that you know that's going to go. But the fact of the matter is, when I made that esoteric reference to Annette Funicello, you know, I, I don't, does anyone even know who she? Yes, you know who she is. Once I play the tape of the man begging for his life, and the cop's voice, you're going to agree with me. I did it last week on Thursday or Friday. I couldn't sleep that night, thinking that there were maniac cops like that roaming the streets, who have guns and clubs and kill people just for fun. So I would. I would ask you to go to michaelsavage.com and look at the picture of the cop, look at his face, and then try to listen to the video, ta the audio tape of the killing. Video shows police killing of Daniel Shaver in Mesa, Arizona. If you could watch that tape and honestly say to me that cop is not a psychopathic murderer, I would ask you to question your own, let us say, activity. And again, I've been the biggest supporter of police for over 24 years on this radio show. In all professions, in all walks of life, there are rotten apples. In talk radio, there are, rot there are rotten apples. People who pretend to represent American conservative values, but they're worse than drug cartel dealers in terms of what they do to their competition. In the police world, there are rotten apples. In doctors, there are rotten apples. You saw the one about the doctor who carved his initials on the liver of patients with a laser beam. Can you believe this? So in all walks of life, there are rotten apples. But I, I would like to say to you that the politics are dead for 2017. I don't want to do them. I caution you, if you have a child in the room, would you please turn the radio off? If you are a child, please do not listen to this, what I'm about to play. If you are a snowflake, do not listen to what I'm about to play. If uh, you think I'm joking, you're not going to like what you're about to hear. I played it last week. It shattered me for two days, and I'm a grown man. The wife or the widow now of the unarmed man who was shot and killed outside his hotel room by an Arizona police officer as he begged for his life, and then the, the murderer, the cop, got off with this murder is shocking. It's a shocking story that should not be forgotten. And I'm going to play it in a minute, a piece of the tape, because you have to hear it with your own ears. And then we're going to read a letter from my attorney, Daniel Horowitz, on the Mesa cop killing the begging man in the hotel hallway. So, again, if you're faint of heart and you're very sensitive and you don't want to be shattered, I'm telling you don't listen to this. But others, please listen to this and tell me what you think. Put your hand there! Hand up in the air! You do that again, we're shooting you. Do you understand? Do not shoot me. Okay. Then listen to my instructions. I'm trying to just do what you... Don't talk! Listen! Hand straight up in the air. Do not put your hands down for any reason. You think you're going to fall, you better fall on your face. Your hands go back in the small of your back or down. We are going to shoot you. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Crawl towards me. Crawl towards me! Yes, sir. Don't go! The cop executed this man begging for his life in the United States of America in the year 2016. He was given a trial... And the trick lawyer so flummoxed the jury, the judge so flummoxed the trial that the, the cop, the killer cop, walked away scot-free, leaving two young children and a widow. I'm calling for a federal investigation because there's no justice here. This is a shocker. I, I've never seen anything like this in my life. If I'd seen this coming out of Pakistan, I would say this is terrible, but what do you expect from a third world country? Or if I'd seen this coming out of Iraq, I'd say this is what you expect in a war zone that is lawless. But no, it was in the United States of America in Mesa, Arizona. So my attorney, Dan Horowitz, who's a criminal defense attorney who has dealt with tragedy in his own life, murder in his own life, who had, deals with some of the toughest people on the planet as a defense counsel in some of the toughest prisons in the world, in California, has this to say. On the Mesa cop killing the begging man, he said it was first-degree murder by the cop. Why did he have that man crawl toward him? This is not what a police officer would say. The only proper instruction is to lie face down, arms outstretched. Why have him crawl toward him? Every step closer increases the danger to the officer. 
The entire video is a type of psychological torture. There was never any outcome. There was never any possible outcome other than death. As the man got closer, then what? The officer would say, stop, get on the ground. Why have him crawl? Let him get on the ground and walk to him. What's the difference? The difference is a sadistic power mania of the cop. Danny, you're 100% right. The wife says, the widow says, people had to see him die an inhumane death to, to care. Wife of man shot dead by cop as he begged on his knees for his life. Gives harrowing first interview. I'm shocked that the nation is not up in, in, up in arms over this. And so I'm keeping it alive until the federal government moves in and seizes this cop and puts him on trial for first-degree murder. And if you want to watch the tape or, f or send it around, it's on michaelsavage.com. Wife of man killed by Arizona cop as he was on his knees talks. And you'll see a picture of the cop uh, right on the, on the website with the glasses and the tattooed arms. There's nothing against glasses or tattooed arms, but look at the man's face. He was tried for second-degree murder, and he got off scot-free because of the tricks his lawyer played and because of the tricks the judge played to defend the psychopath. Do you know, the, do you know what he had etched on the stock of his, of his automatic weapon, his rifle? He etched into the stock of his rifle against company policy were, were the words, you're effed. It was right out of a Michael Douglas movie, like from years ago, where there's a crazy man who goes out to kill in the streets. This cop was a psychopathic murderer, in my estimation, looking to kill somebody. Look, it's a terrible thing, and the reason I'm playing it over and over again is because I want the federal government to step in. I don't know why Jeff, I mean, Jeff Sessions is up to his neck in alligators, I get it. And maybe politically he's afraid of taking on police unions, but he should retry this man uh, and try him for first-degree murder. It's homicide. Hey, look, my friends, at times like this that makes you just say what, what's happened to our world is at this point there's nothing left, truthfully, but uh, a faith in God. We cannot have faith in man anymore. There's no faith in man. There's no faith in politicians. There's no faith in the media. There's faith only in what? The rock of ages. The rock of ages. What is the rock of ages? Why, it's that silly book that millions of people have clung to, actually billions of people have clung to, if you count Christians and others, for a long period of time, for millennia. You know that book that's mocked by Anderson Cooper and the smart people from the Hollywood Media Axis? The Hollywood Media Axis, you know the book that they mock, don't you? That's the book. That's the one to count on. And it's my struggles to understand it all. And I, I don't believe in organized religion myself. In fact, the more I see of it, the less I like of it. I don't like yokel rabbis using Hanukkah as a weapon against people to raise money. I don't like yokel rabbis climbing up on menorahs to light candles in public squares. To me, it looks like paganism with a torch in their hand. I don't like yokel rabbis who use holidays simply uh, to get over on people and express their ego on crowds. I don't like it at all. And yet I know there's, there's a God up there, a God, the God, the one true God. I know it. It's for me to know. But somehow everywhere I turn, there seems to be I don't know the right word to use, a perversion of virtually everything. It's hard to keep your head when all those around you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, but I'll, I'll try. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. <laughs> Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I, many of you are calling. You're outraged by the shooting of that poor man by the uh, Arizona creep. And you want to talk about it. And I'll take your calls in a few minutes. But Rubio, remember him, little Marco, is threatening not to vote for the tax bill because he wants more money for the poor. The child tax credit, it's currently $2,000 per child under the current bill to low-income families. In the current bill, families that pay little or no income tax would get only $1,100 per child from 2000 Rubio wants that amount increased. So, you know, you could argue both for and against it, whichever way you're on, depending upon your income. But it's Rubio now being a spoiler for some reason, and I can pretty much figure out why. But if Rubio defects, 
It's going to be a very close call, and um, it'll probably be a tiebreaker. If they lose Rubio and Corker, the vote would be 50-50 with VP Pence prepared to cast a tiebreaker for passage. So, And then on top of that, 81-year-old John the Crazy McCain is in a local military hospital being treated for the side effects of brain cancer. And the 80-year-old Thad Cochran of Mississippi had a non-melanoma leisure removed from his nose. Two Republicans missed all Senate votes this week. So it's a little chaotic right now. You know, I know you, I said I know politics today, but let's face it. These are issues that are worth talking about. Shannon on KVOR in Colorado, line nine. Go ahead, please, Shannon. What's on your mind? Hi, doctor. Um, I just wanted to say that I uh, am just absolutely blown away um, that that cop has gotten off. I think he should be on his way to death row right now. Um, and I think that this world is just going crazy. I'm horrified by what is going on in our country right now. Well, look, it boils down to this. The kid was crying, begging for his life, crawling toward the cop. Why didn't they cuff him? Why didn't the other cop hiding behind the door come out and put cuffs on this kid? That's what they should be asking the judge. What did the judge say about it? I don't, and why, why is the other cop not tried? What they did. Why is the other cop not tried as well? Pardon? The people have to watch. People have to watch the videotape to draw conclusions of their own. Then they'll be in the hallway with the cop and the and the kid that, that was killed. Uh, okay, let's go to KBOI in uh, Boise, Idaho. Right, Ben, line two. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Ben? Savage. I did what you asked, and I went into a, our local local bo bookstore. Uh, I found your book, and of course, it was in the back under Christian slash religion. I had it in hand, and I practiced my lines, <laughs> what you wanted us to go up to the clerk and ask. This is a New York Best Time seller. How come it's in the back and it's not in the front? Well, when I got up to the front, of course, I stuttered. I put my mouth in my foot, but I said it again, and he looked at me, and he's like, who cares? What does it matter? I asked him, don't you think you'd have more business if you had the best books up in the front? And he said, look, it's about God. I don't want to offend anyone. Just go on. And I looked around. I saw. I was like, you have this paperback book of the life of Hugh Hefner up front, spread pornography, evil, and <laughs> sin all across the world. Oh, Ben, you're a real, you're a real savage warrior, aren't you? I I practiced in the back of that store a couple of times, but yeah, I'm very proud of you, Ben. Ben, I am proud of you. You're one of the Savage Army. I want to thank you for standing up for the right thing. In this case, you did the right thing. Yes, they tried to bury God. I'm sending you a free copy in hardcover of God, faith, and reason for your best friend. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're talking about the uh, shooting in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, there's another story that it's hard to talk about. U.S. Air Force jets, F-22s, intercepted Russian jets over Syria and had to fire warning flares. It was a big interchange for, what, 40 minutes, according to the reports. And apparently they're playing games over there, over Syria, and I hope it doesn't turn into a, a, a shooting war. God only knows where that would lead. All right, let's go to the callers, 855 Butch on WMAC Radio, Line 5, you're on the Savage Nation. Yes, how you doing, Dr. Sav? I don't know where Butch went, but um, maybe the whole show just <laughs> just went. Butch, WMAC Radio, are you with us on the Savage? I don't know what you just said, so we'll go to the next caller. Um, uh, li what are you doing? Okay, so we've lost our calls, so I guess I'm still on the air, yes or no? Well, I, I was just informed I have no callers, uh, but I have, uh, what do I have? I have no callers, but I have a brain and a microphone and a, and a mouth. So I can keep talking, but apparently the, call, the callers are gone. Okay, so we can do that. Not a big deal. Let me go to my website, michaelsavage.com. Top story, wife of man killed by Arizona cop as he was on his knees talks. God, faith, and reason in bookstores and online. God is not dead. Man is dead to God. 
Uh, Savage Nation hats available. Pre-order only 300 remain. I, I made 500 of them. Everyone wanted the Savage Nation hat. After 20 years, we made 500 of them. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to, you know, make any money on them, but everybody who wanted them is probably going to get them. They'll be sold out soon. Alabama vote confirms Christian values. Here's a sickening one. I, I was I was afraid to read it to you. Remember the illegal immigrant from Mexico who was acquitted of killing Kate Steinle? Not only are the filth lawyers who who sprung him uh, laughing, they're now seeking a new trial for the single firearm conviction of that murderer. I swear to you, this is how sick this is getting. Irony. Pedo film takes Hollywood by storm amid wave of sexual assault allegations. It's a film about male pedophilia where a 24-year-old man uh, has a sex relationship with a 17-year-old boy and Hollywood is going crazy over it. They, every award you can imagine is being... Uh, even in the midst of sexual assault allegations that are rocking Hollywood and America, film executives at Sony have decided to show a film depicting a relationship between a teenage boy and an adult male. The Sony Pictures classic film called Call Me By Your Name uh, is drawing Oscar nominations, Golden Globe nominations, award by Best Picture by the L.A. Film Critics Association. If ever you wanted an example of the disconnect between Hollywood and the rest of the world, this is it. Creep, cre creepy premise in the midst of all these sexual assault allegations that have rocked even Hollywood. Defenders of this vile film assert that the love affair is consensual and would not be illegal given that it takes place in Italy where the age of consent is 16. No comment. We have the callers back. We'll take some callers on the Savage Nation. James on KSFO line four. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Pleasure, sir. Great to talk to you. Yep, what's on your mind? You know, I just can't get this uh, scene off of michaelsavage.com of this guy being shot by this cop. You know, there's a lot of good cops out there, but, you know, this guy obviously has lost his ethic. You know, he's sitting there going yeah. for the rush, you know, feeling that. Yeah, yeah, James, do you see him trying to, you see him trying to scare this guy into, into actually doing everything wrong so he could shoot him? Yeah, that he escalates the situation by putting five bullets in the guy that could endanger anybody else in the area. Unbelievable. It's un but worse yet, he was tried and got off scot-free. All right, let me send you God, faith, and reason. There's nothing else to hang on to right now. FCC votes to repeal net neutrality rules. A milestone for Republican deregulation push. Firefighter killed battling fire in L.A. as massive blaze moves towards Santa Barbara. It was started, by the way, by uh, homeless bums who were in encampment in the woods. Don't tell that to any of the good libs, you know. NYPD opens investigation into Russell Simmons as more sexual assault allegations surface. I don't know where this is going to end. Scientists find a miniature version of our solar system with eight planets and a sun-like star. Wow. Scientists find a miniature version of our solar system with eight planets and a sun-like star? That's like a mini-me, a mini-me solar system. I wonder who would be the president of the United States in that solar system. Maybe Hillary could run there. You know, now the more I think about it, it's made for her. She could go over to that miniature. <laughs> she, could, she could fly to that miniature solar system and uh, find uh, the United States on that planet, and she could run for office. Maybe she'd win over there. Maybe the people have mini brains, and they'd vote for her this time in, in greater numbers. I mean, of course, they beat her. I, mean, I know she beat Trump on a popular vote. I'm not, I'm not uh, naive to that fact. Meal Roy Moore is not conceding. He's still campaigning. Uh, what else is in the news? Let's talk about something else. The race of the shooting cop and the race of the guy who got killed i'm going to ask you something what if the guy who was crawling on his on the ground was black and he was crying and he was seen to be executed by a cop tell me why you don't see any outrage now because we live in a two-tiered system the media runs on a two-tiered system which is based almost entirely on race joe on wdrc in connecticut line eight go ahead please Dr. Savage, it's an honor to speak to you. Uh, the greatest lesson my father ever gave me was to listen to you. And Where's, where, where's your father now? Uh, my dad's still with us. Uh, I grew up in the Bronx, 
Uh, my grandfather was a shoemaker, and um, I learned a lot, uh, great uh, qualities from my grandfather and my father. Um, and I no, you you actually grew up like in a you grew up like in a shoe store in the Bronx, watching your grandfather fix shoes. You know, Michael, I used to come over his house every Sunday for dinner, and he always looked at my shoes. And if he didn't like how the soles looked, uh, he would take my suede pumas and put uh, two-inch soles that were rubber on them. And I would. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a very charming story. It's very, it's got a certain beauty to it. In this age, when no one fixes anything and everything's thrown away, if it gets a scuff on it, can you imagine a man growing up with a grandfather who was a shoemaker in the United States of America? That's a great story. Yeah, and and my grandmother was a seamstress, and if I had just a little tear in my jeans, she'd take them, and I'd have a big patch on my jeans because they would last another another two years because um, unbelievable. You know, I let me ask you truthfully, and I'm not being facetious. Are, are they still living? No, uh, my grandfather and uh, grandmother passed. Uh, my grandmother was able to see her great granddaughter and great grandson, so that was fantastic. Uh, but That's your. Uh, those are your. Wait, those are your children. Those those are your children. Yes. Well, that's a beautiful yes. thing. That's a beautiful thing. Were they Italian? Are you people Italian? Yes. Yes, Dr. Savage. And, you know, you customs and traits, like I was named after my grandfather, so my son is named after his grandfather. So there's a lot of Josephs and Dominics floating around. And that's a beautiful thing, though. When you said shoemaker, I thought, and you said Bronx shoemaker, I figured you had to be Italian. Yeah. yeah. So what what world do you live in now, Joe? Joe, where do you live? You live in New York still? Okay. Uh, you know, Dr. Savage, I moved three years ago to Florida, and I live in a beautiful area in Jacksonville. Um and uh, you see a different type of lifestyle and different values. Uh, I still stick to mine, and they seem to have gotten me pretty far in life. And I try to instill them in my children. I have two beautiful, wonderful children and a wonderful wife. Um, but it troubles me. Um, and I listen to your show as often as possible, driving home from work. And I didn't mm -hmm. hear your show last week. So this was the first I heard of this. And I can tell you, although you're the only person i trust to get information from and, and opinions and news i do listen to other uh venues and i did not hear a word about this so in my heart i think i know the answer already uh that the cop was probably white and the person that got killed was probably white which is why we don't hear anything about it and that's extremely disappointing yeah, yeah, that's exactly right well did you go on my website and look at the guy the cop and the, and the guy he killed i'm I'm still in the car. Uh, oh, oh, well, when you get, listen to me. Do yourself a favor. Don't look at it. I'm telling you. It won't ever leave your brain. And when you hear the cop screaming at the, ki the guy who's 24 years old with two young kids, begging for his life, crying, trying to comply with the, the maniac's orders, you, you're going to want to strangle the cop. Your instincts will be to reach out through the screen and strangle the cop before he kills him. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. All right, let me send you a beautiful Christmas present, God faith and reason for you and your lovely family. What a great call that is. What a beautiful call that is. Beverly Hills death, anesthesiologist charged with murder of patient undergoing plastic surgery. I don't understand that one. Anesthesiologist charged with murder? What, because he made a mistake? That's a crazy thing. How could you charge? When a guy made a mistake as an anesthesiologist, now he's charged with murder? The world's, it seems to be melting down. L.A. County Animal Control confirms investigation into death of 29 horses. That's like a heart pain. That's like a pain right on the top of the heart. Disney buys Murdoch, blah, blah, blah. We know where that's going to be in two years. Mickey Mouse on Fox News. I know Fox News is not included in part of the deal. Everyone on Fox News, if I were them, they'd be looking over their shoulder at, at Mr. Iger current, trying to curry favor with Disney. Don't make no mistakes about it. They're all going to make sure Iger likes them, whether he owns them or not. And uh, the age of the conservative opinion on Fox News will be no more in a very short period of time. There's no question that's where it's going to go. I would be surprised, let's put it to you that way, if, it, if, it, if it's the other way. If you hear like a, even an inkling. Ruby already talked about little Marco, the water. Why did Donald ridicule him when he drank water during the primary? Remember he drank water and he held up water. Trump mocked him with the water bottle. And what goes around comes around. And then look, it's my job is to look from the outside in. I'm not an insider looking out. I'm not here. 
So Trump ridiculed Marco Rubio during the primaries. Look at little Marco. And he remember he mocked him with the water bottle? <laughs> that he needed a water bottle? Last week, Trump needed a water bottle. What are you going to say about that? What goes around comes around. Then they said United States. United States. That's because he didn't have enough water. Look, I back Trump 100%, but my job is not to work for the White House. I don't work for the White House. My job is to simply sit out here like uh, I do and look, uh, look in. And that's the end of that. What's on the various websites that's worth telling you about that you can't get yourself? Well, you're in cars, a lot of you. So you're depending upon me to do it for you. And so let's go to the Fox News website. Two GOP senators hold back support for tax bill over child tax credit. I covered that already. Widow wants seat of Kentucky lawmaker who killed himself amid sex assault scandal. Ugh. I don't want to talk about the FBI guys. I'm sick of it, everyone. Oh, FBI bad. FBI, FBI, FBI. FBI. Photographer to the stars, Terry Richardson, allegedly forced model to perform oral. Okay, I'll stop right there. Not interested. Ex-NBC staffer details secret sexual relationship with disgraced Matt Lauer. He got around that guy. He had me fooled. You know, I mean, for the years I, I saw him in passing, Matt Lauer, he was not like the kind of guy you'd think was like a perv type. He didn't strike me as pervy. He looked like a little like, you know, he looks like a little bit like Pee Wee Herman, like a well-fed Pee, Pee Wee Herman. Doesn't he? Doesn't Matt Lauer look like a well-fed Pee Wee Herman? It looked like Pee Wee Herman on a meat diet. Let's put it to you that way, right? <laughs> Look, when I come back, we're going to get to Butch. We lost the callers for a minute. Butch has written the tribute to the Savage Nation in a poem. I'm going to listen to it the minute I return right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We are so short of time. I have a wonderful caller named Butch from WMAC Radio. Butch, go ahead. What is it you wanted to do on the air? I wanted to give a dedication to the Savage Nation. A few words I put together. Go ahead. Fire away. Stand in the rain. Stand a little more. Think harder a lot than just think. Dread conclusions roller coaster up after steam rolling down. A walkabout journey developing in matter, delicately tucked behind the insulated windows of soul. No ticketed price is paid to begin. Thus, the assumption of the end being somewhat vague is clearly perceived. Just follow light to understood free. Well, welcome to Cafe Savage. Now, what motivated you to write that? Your show, Dr. Savage. Uh, I just started listening to it probably about two or three months ago. And it's moved me pretty well. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to like work the call, but you weren't, you weren't on the other side of the political aisle before, were you? No, uh, I just, I didn't know there was more people out there like myself. So, um, where, Butch, where do you live? What kind of, what city do you live in? I live in a small town in South Georgia. Well, I'm glad I could touch you in your small town in South Georgia through the m medium of radio, and I'm going to send you my book, God, Faith, and Reason. Thank you for listening. Here's another kicker. Here's another kicker, everybody. You remember the Evergreen professor who made anti-white comments? I mean vile anti-white comments. Naoma Lowy, a self-described black queer artist and educator. Remember her? She was caught on video harassing her white coworkers. Remember her? You know the kind of things she said about white people? about whites, the vile, racist things she wrote. This is a college teacher. Well, she resigned. Well, but here's the bad news. They gave her a $240,000 settlement. That's right. Evergreen State College in Washington had a so-called professor captured on video with the most vile anti-white statements, resigned after reaching a financial settlement of $240,000, because she filed a discrimination and hostile work environment claim. My friend Shakespeare knew what to do with lawyers. 
Lowy has been on personal leave since the beginning of the school year after she claimed she was the victim of online attacks on her. She was caught on video berating her white co-workers for their race. I can't even read what this illiterate stooge had to say. She provoked racial tensions. She's seen on videos making racist comments toward white people, calling everyone was white or white supremacist. And she provoked racial tension and she won the big, big reward. She got a $240,000 settlement. Shakespeare knew what to do with lawyers. Visit me online at michaelsavage.com to read about this and all other stories on the Savage Nation. Savage.